Hello and what's up YouTube? This video is the part 2 or the continuation of reverse engineering the main PCB of a commercial powder coating gun. Be sure to have a look at part 1 because it is a precursor to this video. So previously I already drew the circuit schematics and break down the PCB into several functional blocks. This time I will be connecting the board to a power source and I will test the respective circuit blocks one by one. Let's get started. I connect approximately 18 volts from my adjustable bench power supply. The first thing I notice is the LED2 turn on. This is actually the LED from the 5 volts supply block. The first functional block I will evaluate is the main 18 volts unregulated power supply. For this test, I measure the voltage at the positive side of the bridge rectifier diode. And there you go. We can see about 18 volts, so that part of the circuit is uh, working fine. Next, I will check the output of the 5 volts linear regulator supply. Looking at the circuit schematic, I can make the measurement from the cathode of D7. Okay, so there is the 5 volts, so we know that this part of the circuit is working fine. Based on the circuit schematic, 5 volts is also present at the terminal number 6 of uh, the white connector. The white connector connects to a separate display driver PCV, as can be seen in this uh, AliExpress listing. So apparently, this display driver board is getting the power from the 5 volts regulated power supply block. The photo in this website is very clear that I can almost be able to reverse engineer it. Unsurprisingly, the small surface mount IC in the board has the part number erased, but I am pretty sure it is a non-inverting op amp. So I connect a jumper wire to pin number 6 of the terminal and we should also be see 5 volts. And there you go. I intentionally connect a jumper wire to the 5 volts output because next I want to check the relay driver circuit with uh, this voltage. At the moment I do not have the signal from terminal 7. However, I will try to input 5 volts DC voltage at the cathode of D4 and that should provide the forward bias to the transistor. And we should see the relay turning on. There you go. We can also hear the relay contacts clicking and the LED one turning on. Next, I want to test the adjustable voltage power supply block. So I already connected the potentiometers. To check the output voltage, I connected a alligator clip to pin number 11 of this connector and the other end I connect to my voltmeter test lead. The voltage should change if I turn this potentiometer. And there you go. The maximum is about 17.3 volts, which is slightly less than 18 volts main supply as expected. The minimum voltage if I turn the potentiometer all the way to the other direction is about 2.7 volts. So this adjustable supply voltage to the oscillator is what actually adjusts the KV output of the gun. Very much the same with my homemade gun setup. For now, I will set it to about 12 volts. Later, we'll get back to this part of the circuit that is actually interconnected to the current limiter block. Next, I will test the current limiter circuit block DC response. First, this IC number 2, which is a non-inverting amplifier. I will measure the output voltage of the IC and we should see the voltage change when I turn the potentiometer. 
Looking at the circuit diagram, that output is connected to terminal number 10 of the white connector, corresponding to the microampere display. I just move the jumper wire to terminal number 10 and connect to my voltmeter. I will adjust the potentiometer and we should see that voltage change. The lowest is about 0 0.36 volts and the highest is about 3.07 volts. The only function of IC2 is to produce the signal to the display driver. So the display driver board processes that voltage to display the relative microampere output of the gun, of which have the maximum range of 100 microampere. Next, I will measure the voltage at this node, which is the reference voltage of the comparator. For that, I will connect the test leads to C15, and we should also see a change in voltage if I turn the potentiometer. So I'm getting a maximum of uh, 2.3 volts and a minimum of about 0 0.27 volts. That voltage change because the potentiometer is part of this voltage divider network. And that voltage is the reference voltage connected to the non-inverting input of the comparator IC1. Next, I will evaluate if the comparator IC1 is working. So at the moment, I will set the reference voltage to some, somewhere in the middle at about 1 volt. If a voltage higher than 1 volt is present at the inverting input, the output of this comparator should be low. So to input the higher voltage, I will use the 5 volts supply and connect to terminal number 5. Then I will measure the output of this IC at R1. Again, I connect the jumper wire to the 5 volts source that I will connect momentarily to terminal 5. Now if I measure at R31, the voltage is high at about 12 volts. We are getting close to 12 volts because R31 is also connected to the output of the adjustable voltage supply that we earlier set to 12 volts. But as you can see, when I introduce 5 volts to the terminal number 5, we can see that the output of the comparator drops to 0. So, it seems that the comparator is working fine. Now, we'll get back to the adjustable voltage supply. When the output of the comparator is low, the voltage at the base of the transistor will be less than the voltage at the emitter, so the transistor will turn on. And when that happens, the output of the adjustable power supply should significantly drop. So again, I want to measure the output of the adjustable voltage supply. I connect an alligator clip to pin number 11 of this connector and to my voltmeter. Right now, we are getting about 12 volts. And when I connect the 5 volts to terminal number 5, that should drop significantly. And there you go. The output of the adjustable voltage supply dropped to about 1.42 volts. So at this point, I already verified that the current limit circuit in conjunction to the adjustable voltage supply is working fine, at least on the DC response. But in order to test the closed loop negative feedback of the current limit function, I need the oscillator working. As you can see here, I removed the transistors of the oscillator. I actually found one of it defective. I will also be checking all of these passive components of the oscillator and I am confident I'll be able to bring it back to life. Okay, so the next functional circuit block that I will test is the oscillator. For this test, I will be using an oscilloscope. I also connected a high voltage step-up transformer to the oscillator because it will only work with an inductor load as I found out in the LT-SPI simulation. So now I adjust the supply 
voltage to the oscillator at about 12 volts. And when I turn on the push button switch, we can see this waveform as I probe from terminal number 7. Now this waveform is a textbook example of a damp sine wave that is produced by the flywheel effect of the LC oscillator. I zoom out the time per division of the oscilloscope and now we are seeing the periodic waveform. So it means that our oscillator is now working. When we look back at the main board, we can see and hear that the relay driver is working as well because the relay driver is now getting the signal from terminal 7. Now I try to see if high voltage is induced to the secondary of the step-up transformer. And indeed, the spark tells me that high voltage is induced in the secondary and also confirm that the oscillator is working. On this next test, I connect a high voltage cascade and we can clearly see that the high voltage is present. Now take a look at the output waveform of the oscillator at terminal 7. The positive peak is about 10 volts, which is close to the supply voltage of our oscillator. I set to 12 volts. Now watch what happened if I adjust the supply voltage to about 6 volts. The positive peak of the output waveform also decreases following the supply voltage. And that is how the KV of the powder coating gun is adjusted just by the supply voltage to the oscillator, which is almost the same with my homemade powder coating gun. Take note that at this point, I'm not yet connecting the current limit function. The last test I want to do is the current limit circuit. Thanks to the photo at eBay, I know that terminal 5 is connected to the secondary of the high voltage transformer, as per this diagram. Again, the trigger switch in the gun simply connect the primary of the transformer to ground. Looking at the circuit diagram, I will connect the oscilloscope probe at this node of R13. By the way, FD2 is a gas discharge tube or, or GDT, which is essentially a spark gap. It is used as a protection device to short out a certain level of high voltage to ground. For now, I will desolder R15 because I don't know yet what voltage level we will be getting and, and I worry that it will damage the rest of the circuit. To prevent the comparator from turning down the supply voltage, I have to temporarily connect a pull-down resistor to the non-inverting input. And here it is. This is the pull-down resistor I connect to the non-inverting input. That is the oscilloscope probe connected to terminal number 5. And this alligator clip connects terminal 5 to the secondary of the transformer following the photo from eBay. And when I press the button switch, we are getting a waveform of about 1 volt amplitude. I try to change the distance of the high voltage cascade electrode to the ground. And now we are getting another waveform that is less than 1 volt amplitude. These voltage levels are safely within the range of the reference voltage to the non-inverting input of the comparator. This voltage coming from the terminal 5 is directly related to the current flowing to the high voltage cascade and consequently the microampere output of the powder coating gun. To simply put it this way, the current limiter circuit turn down the supply voltage when the output current gets too high. Now that I know that the circuit is working fine, I made an enclosure for it. More details of the enclosure and assembly in future videos. For now, I would just like to demonstrate the current limit function of the system in action. 
For this test, I placed the ground conductor, this green wire, at a certain distance from the electrode of the high voltage cascade. The green LED display is a voltmeter connected to the output of IC2. It will tell us the relative level of limit current. The red LED display is a voltmeter that tells us the output voltage of the adjustable voltage supply. I will try to set the current limit to a lower output current. And when I press the button, you will see that the supply voltage to the oscillator drops. If I turn the limit current even lower, the supply voltage to the oscillator even drops further. So that adjustment to the supply voltage is what decreases the output current to meet the level set by the current limiter circuit. Now if I crank up the current limit, you will see that the supply voltage does not change because it is not able to reach the current limit. And of course, we can adjust the current limit all the way up together with the supply voltage for the maximum output power of the powder coating gun. And that concludes my work of reverse engineering the main board of the commercial powder coating gun. I am very glad that I was able to make it work. Thank you for watching my videos and be sure to subscribe to my channel. I will have more videos coming up with this new powder coating power supply so be sure to stay tuned. Thank you very much and God bless you all.